So guys, welcome back to the Lost Farm. Uh, today I'm working on hanging a gate. Um, this is just a small eight foot gate. Um, really what it's doing is, our property shape kind of funny here. We've got a sharp triangle that comes up into our pasture. Well, my pasture used to be on this triangle, but it actually belonged to my neighbor. Well, my neighbor uh, is planning on needing this piece of land for something. It's probably not even a, maybe a tenth of an acre, maybe a quarter acre. I don't, it's not a lot. Um, but anyways, I had to move my fence off of it. So now I'm uh, working on putting this gate up and I'll be complete with the fence. But what I need to do, well, the reason for the gate is I've got a road that goes all the way around the outside of my fence. And uh, I like to have it that way just so I can get around uh, the check on fences and everything. And this gate will probably be used for nothing more than maybe the four wheeler or the uh, Kubota side by side to get through. Um, however, it is wide enough, but I'm pretty sure my, my, that bigger John Deere I've got may fit through it. I'm not sure. But anyways, what, really the only purpose of it is, is if I'm working on the fence and I need to get inside the fence, I don't have to drive all the way back around to the closest gate. So I thought it'd be a good opportunity since I was having to move the fence anyways to go ahead and put one up. But first off, what you need to do when you're trying to hang a gate is uh, the first thing you want to figure out is which way you want the gate to open. If you want it to swing from like say this post and swing this way or hang it on this post and swing like this. Um, I'm still kind of undecided on that just just yet. Um, and also, the main thing of hanging a gate, which these posts, I've already got them here, but the main thing is to know what size gate you're going to put in a, in a location. And you want the distance between this post and this post to be roughly about five inches more than what the length of the gate is. So if you're putting up an eight foot gate, you know, you can give yourself some room. Actually, these two posts are just a tad bit closer than what they should be. So I think it's going to work to where the gate will swing all the way around, but I'm not sure. Um, but you want them to be just a tad bit bigger than what the actual length of the gate is. That way, at least that's the way I like to do it, is where your gate will swing in either direction. Because if you had the whole the length of the post apart and it was narrower than your gate then you're going to just swing up to this post or that post and you'll only be able to open it in one direction and sometimes that's not the, the ideal opportunity um, but I do like my gates to be able to swing all the way around in like a 180 degree angle so anyways I'm going to see what I need to do here and one other thing I want to mention before I get started is I've got this underground electric wire it's like a, it's made for fencing um it's just got a real thick uh, heavy duty plastic coating on it and i'm going to have to take and connect it to uh to the wires on this side on the electric fence and dig a trench all the way across and connect it to this side um, and that will make the circuit continue on around on my electric fence because this is an electric fence um and you want to make sure you keep connectivity because as of right now I've got a break in the wire so my power is actually coming from this way and coming around so once I flip the power back on if I don't do this I won't have power on this stretch of fence here um, so that's another thing to keep in mind I may not be able to use this wire this particular wire this is all I've got left over um, from from a whole roll of wire that I did have. Um, so I may end up having to buy more because I'm not sure that this one's going to be long enough to reach it. I have not tried. But anyways, I'm going to try to work on figuring out which way I'm going to hang this gate and we'll get started putting it up and show you exactly what you need to do when you're hanging a gate. Folks, this is nothing but pretty much the cheapest gate you can buy at Tractor Supply. Um, all I have in here is horses. 
Um, they're nothing wild. They're, they don't act crazy. And occasionally I'll have a couple calves in here to raise out, but um, a couple steers or something to raise out. But, um, you know, so I don't have any wild animals in here. But if you were to have some pretty wild animals, you probably want to go with a whole lot better quality gate than this one because this one, uh, I, I've seen calves destroy these gates right here like they're like they're aluminum can. They'll fold them up like nothing. But anyways, I just cheaped out on this one because I don't have a need for that heavy duty of a gate. Um, anyways, I think that right there is how I'm going to hang it. I believe I'm going to hang it off of this post. That way it will swing this way. I think that's how I'm going to do it. Yep, I believe that's what I'm going to do. So, to start off with, what you'll have to do, you know, on this short of a gate, it's not that big of a deal because this post is definitely sturdy enough to uh, hold this gate up. However, if I had a uh, 12, 14, 16, 20-foot gate hanging off of this, you're going to need a post that's braced a whole lot better than this one. Um, you know, you would need some type of bracing coming off of this side to um, help hold that post up because that's a lot of dead weight just out there hanging. And as a matter of fact, you would probably, when this the gate is in the closed position, you would want something up here that the gate can rest on just so it takes the, the tension off of that post all the time you know and it would only be on it when you'd actually open the fence up but like i said i believe this is how i'm going to do it we're going to check to make sure this gate's level and we'll get it level and that'll help us mark where we're going to actually need to drill our holes to screw in the little hinge pieces here Y'all, this is one main thing that needs to be done when you're hanging a gate, is make sure it's level. Nothing worse than driving by a pasture somewhere and seeing a gate that's like this or like this. I, everything needs to be level and square. In my opinion, um, it would help if I had a magnetic level. there shows to be level so I'm probably gonna have to move this brace right here down quite a bit because at the moment I'm above almost right at the very top of the post so when you're working by yourself you know everything around here is on a slope so there's no such thing as having a flat piece of ground on, on uh, where I live and you'll notice that it's touching on this end it's touching the ground and down here I'm going to end up having a pretty good gap. So what I'm going to do is I'll take my shovel and dig out, which a lot of this is dirt that actually came out from when I buried the post. But I'm going to take my shovel and clean all that up and uh, try to get this in just a tad bit lower. That way this gap down here is not quite as tall, which I'm not going to, I'm not going to be able to change a whole lot, but I will be able to change a little bit. Um, and then we'll set it back up and see if we see what we got. Just so you know, it is extremely wet here right now. Um, it's done nothing but rain for, seems like weeks. Honestly, all year's been wet, but this this winter has really been wet. Um, it just hasn't been very cold. Um, we're, it's the day, let's see, it's two days after Christmas right now. And uh, we had a really cold Christmas day, and yesterday was really cold, but that's really the first cold weather we've had, and so nothing's really been froze, the ground's not been froze, and everywhere you go it's just a muddy mess. So you're getting ready to see this mud here. That's no 
nothing but just pure red mud. My foot. I hate working in mud, but it's just part of it. So that's probably about as deep as I'm really going to take it. That's not a lot, but it is a little. Working by yourself, you kind of have to get creative sometimes. Um, like I said, I can leave this end sitting on the ground. And with that end sitting on the ground, that's fine. I don't really care if that end's dragging the ground. When we actually put the gate, install the gate, we'll adjust it so that that end's picked up just a hair. But on this end, in order for me to mark it, I'm going to have to find me a block or a rock or something to sit under this end in order to hold it up level. So, let's see what we can find. Okay, so that's going to hold me close enough, and when I actually go to adjust the gate to get it level, um, we'll actually fine detail it when we go to screwing these in. Because once I screw these in, you know, I can screw the bottom one in first, and then the top one will be what I use for my adjustment. Um, I'll show you that here in just a few minutes, but I'll actually leave this one set at a certain length and then I'll bring this one after I get my holes drilled and get this screwed in I'll bring this one in and if I need to level the gate up I'll either screw it in or screw it out in order to bring that top down or up however it needs to go but on this particular gate hold on we got See, on this particular gate, this top hinge is adjustable. This bottom hinge is a fixed hinge. It doesn't move. Um, a lot of times on your heavy-duty gates, uh, both of them will move and you can adjust them. But like I said, this is pretty much the cheapest gate you can get from Tractor Supply. Um, matter of fact, it was on sale on Black Friday. <laughs> so I picked it up. But anyways, like I was saying, what I'm going to do is mark down here where this one needs to go. And I'm actually going to pick this up just a little bit higher so because in order for this gate to set level, this needs to be higher. So I'm going to pick it up about an inch, and I'll end up dr drilling my hole like right in there. And you'll try to get it as centered of the post as you can. We'll do some measuring here real quick in just a second. And then that one, we will, uh, see this can slide down after I loosen that bolt. I can slide this down and we'll fix this to where we can uh, use this one to really level up the gate true and make it, make it look good. All right, so I've got my hole marked here and we're going to get the drilling on this thing. Uh, this is not very technical. 
but I remembered I didn't have a pencil in my pocket when I went to drill when I went to mark this hole. So I set the gate up level and just so happened this splinter was right where the hole needs to be. So we're gonna drill right there. And by the way, this is a half inch paddle bit. And we're gonna drill. Gosh, my drill's even muddy down here. I just laid it down on the ground for one second. screwed in. And once you get it started, which they start fairly easy, we set the gate out of the way. So once you get it started, it's easiest just to take a big pair of channel locks or uh, if you've got like an adjustable wrench that's got the hole in the end of it, if you've got a bigger one, you can take that hole and slide it right over that and just hook it to it and go around and around and around with it. Um, I don't really have an adjustable wrench big enough down here with me right now, so we're just going to use these channel locks, which they work just as good, but it does make it easier. If you've got a wrench or something you can slide over that'll just kind of lock on. So this is just a long boring process. Just screw that thing in. Guys, look at this. It is nasty. Now this really limits what you're able to do right now. You know, we've got a ton of work we need to be doing. We've got land clearing I need to do. Um, and it's just not possible. And it's not gonna be possible until something changes. And at the moment, it doesn't look like any type of change in the near future. We've got a couple of pretty days ahead, but towards the end of uh, the week, we're right back into a rainy spell. Um, and those couple of days are just not gonna be enough to dry it out, to dry the land out enough to where you can get out and work. Not this time of year anyways. So on this one, um, being that I'm so close right here, I mean my poles are so close together, I'm going to try to get this one screwed in pretty far. About right there. But if your posts were farther apart, you could leave this hinge out just a little bit farther and it would take up some of that gap. So next, we want to set our gate down on that, on that hinge. Just like that.
and so what I want to show you here this can slide up and down we're gonna we're gonna put this hinge in just like this and then slide that collar up on it because that will prevent if I was to put this hinge in like that you would be able to just pick up on this gate and take it off. You don't want that. So I need to check to make sure things are level again. And then we'll put this one in. All right. So right there is where our gate will be sitting permanently while it's closed. We are just about right. We're not quite level, but a good thing to kind of keep in mind is, now when I say not quite level, I mean it's, it's real dang close. But a good thing to keep in mind is that gate's got some weight on it. So if you can have that end with a slight, this end slightly higher, and when I say slight, like I'm talking about where the bubble is just a hair, over the mark that will let the actual hanging weight of the gate will pull that down and so you'll kind of compensate for any type of sag or anything that may come in the gate but i you know don't just kind of take that lightly when i say out of level i mean just a hair out of level um then you want to get the, le the gate level this way and in order for the gate to swing properly you really need to have it level this way. So right there is level. We need to get a wrench and loosen up this uh, collar here to where it'll slide. We'll slide it down. We'll go ahead and move the gate back out of the way and drill us a hole right here and put that put this other uh, hinge in. So this is a 9 16. Yep. So like I say, we'll get this. slid down and we're gonna we're gonna mark our hole to where we can screw this one in and slide that collar right back up on it all right so the first thing we need to do is go back and check for level one more time Okay, right there we're level, and we want, that's about, that little shank there is about an inch and a half, two inches, so we want to put that hole, we can take it and just set it in there like that, and there's actually another very distinct mark right there that I'm going to use for my marking, and I don't even have to go grab a pencil proper way to do it would be have a pencil in your pocket and mark this hole once again like I said my pencils at the house and uh, or actually up at the building and there's already a mark there so that'll work for me doesn't have to be precise because it is just an old farm gate but we want it as close to, to you know want it we want it to look good I wish you guys would look at this my feet I don't think you can see it in the camera, but my feet are freaking covered in mud. It's just, it's annoying, really. So I'm going to set this gate back down. I'm going to set it back off of this hinge. Just lean it up there. That particular mark is right there. I want to try to keep your drill bit straight as well. I like to sort of wallow out the hole. 
just because these are slightly bigger than a half inch, this is a half inch drill bit. If you wallow out that hole some, it still gives you plenty of, of grip in there for your threads. But yet, yeah, it makes it a little bit easier to screw in because if I were to screw this directly into that, that's a pretty tight fit. Um, so I will wallow it out some, and it also makes it easier to start. Now this one, just to get you get you started, you can screw it in approximately as much as that one is. And if your post is truly level, you actually want it screwed in as much as that one. And uh, that will allow the gate to hang level. However, if your post is out of level, um, you know, you can adjust this. You can screw it in or out to adjust that the levelness of that gate. And uh, that way the gate can still hang level. Now there's actually a couple other simpler ways I could have went about this. I'm for some reason I'm a fan of gates. I like to have a gate, but you can also use those spring connectors. Being that this is not going to be a heavily used opening here in the fence, you know you can use those spring connectors, and it would just bring each wire around, and you would have like the little the handle on it and the little spring connector and Honestly, that's probably what I should have done. But I, I, I'm just a fan of gates. I don't know why. I, I like gates. And to me, they're a little easier to deal with than those spring connectors. Okay, so right there. Just about right. So we'll bring our gate around. Okay. So now I already knew this. I'm going to have to dig down on that end just a tad bit more. But, um, let me check. Go back and check my level. Yeah, I really need, I need to dig down on that side just a, a hair more. And I'm probably going to have to screw this hinge in just a hair more. tell y'all what it makes life tough living on steep land or hilly land but I wouldn't trade it for anything in the world I guess because it's home I don't know but man I tell you what not having level land sure does make life difficult gonna have to screw this this one in just a little
So I'm just looking, that one's actually still screwed in quite a bit farther than this one is. So we'll get a couple more rounds. Maybe right there should work. Looks like I didn't put my hole up high enough, so I'm going to have to actually take this bracket completely loose and twist it a little bit so I can get it down over top of this hinge piece here. Try to show you what I'm talking about. See there? That's as low as that collar will go, but my hinge is still down lower but I can take this complete this nut completely out spread that open and angle that and then twist it back on it that's gonna be no problem so let's get that taken care of real quick I don't know if you guys can hear that or not, but can y'all hear that guinea up there? I've got one guinea that got out of my little poultry netting up there, which they do that all the time. And he's having a fit. Them guineas tickle me. They're, they're some interesting creatures. So there's one thing to note here. If you didn't take your measurements right and didn't line this, these uh, hinges up perfectly level, you can get a little bit of adjustment out of this hinge here. Um, let me I'm going to grab the camera here and show you that. See what I'm talking about? You can slide that that way and that way. And so if it's not perfect, you've got a little bit of adjustment right there that you can use. Um, but all we've got left to do is tighten up that nut and we've got this gate hung. In case you're wondering what I'm using, this is a Craftsman brushless impact driver. Um, pretty much the same thing as a Dewalt, except it's got a whole lot cheaper price tag. And I'm really becoming a fan of this Craftsman uh, 20 volt stuff. Um, it's working pretty good. I mean, I'm a, I'm a huge Dewalt fan. I like my Dewalt stuff. But uh, I actually picked up a couple of these a while back because of the price, and I, I really like them so far. Uh, one thing I forgot to check was this level. Of Oh, we're actually perfect. Um, so that's it. This gate is hung. It's probably not going to swing too freely right now because I don't have enough dug out up here, but we'll try and see. Let 
Look at there, look at there. That's what we want to see. That's what we want to see. Um, so that pretty much wraps it up for this video. Like I said, um, being that this is an electric fence, I am still got to uh, run the electric wire under the ground here to connect this fence to that fence. Um, now, in order to close this gate, every, pretty much every gate you buy will come with one of these chains here. And uh, that'll just wrap around your post and wrap around right onto your gate there. But um, anyways, that's what's going on here today. It's muddy, it's a mess, and uh, we're just trying to take care of a few little odd and end chores trying to finish up some stuff. So hopefully, we can turn, the, turn our horses out this evening, and there will definitely be some happy campers. They've been pinned up in a little, probably 100 by 100 temporary fence up there for the past, I don't know, probably two weeks because I've been working on this new fence. So they'll, they'll, they'll be, get, be happy to get out of that, that's for sure. So anyways, um, I'm going to tidy up a few things here and get my mess up. I appreciate you guys watching, and we'll catch you on the next video.